Hello and thanks for joining us for our late night newscast coming to you from Adidang's news centre in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. We start with the fallout from Britain's momentous decision to leave the European Union. The result came out barely 36 hours ago, but EU leaders are pressuring Britain to make its decision official by invoking Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. There are also rumblings out of Scotland that it wants to hold its own referendum on leaving the United Kingdom and remaining in the EU. Shin Semin reports. EU leaders determined to preserve their union are looking for a speedy divorce from the UK after Britons voted to leave the bloc. Officials say the process should start right away, however painful that may be for both sides. An emergency foreign ministers meeting of the EU's six founding members, minus Britain, is taking place in Berlin. Speaking to reporters, France's foreign minister said the negotiations have to take place quickly for the sake of the common interests, and the ball is now in Britain's court. Germany's foreign minister said the UK must promptly invoke Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty to make the withdrawal official. In Edinburgh, the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, announced her intention Saturday for an independence referendum from the UK, saying it was very much on the table. She said the Scottish government would seek immediate discussions with EU institutions and member states to review options regarding the matter. Expressing her sadness at the British decision, German Chancellor Angela Merkel said she is seeking a good, objective climate in talks on Brexit. She said there is no need to be nasty as the EU will remain a close partner with the UK despite its exit. Following on the result on Friday morning, ratings agency Moody's wasted no time downgrading Britain's credit rating outlook to negative from stable. It says the UK's new trade relations with the EU may cause lower growth as confidence levels and investment may suffer. Shin Semin, Arirang News. The Korean government is monitoring the impact of Brexit around the clock. Officials say they'll take action swiftly and firmly to minimize its fallout on local markets if necessary. Meeting in Seoul Saturday, officials from the finance and industry ministries, as well as the central bank, said big uncertainties surround Britain's exit from the EU and the consequences are impossible to predict. Korea stock markets took a hit on Friday and the local currency tumbled more than 2.5% against the greenback. The British ambassador to South Korea has stressed his country's relationship with Seoul will not change despite the people, the British people's decision to leave the European Union. Speaking with Yonap News Agency, Charles Hay said Britain outside the EU will look very similar to Britain inside the EU, especially with respect to its relationship with friends and allies like South Korea. He urged people to remember that nothing will happen very soon as Britain first has to inform the EU of its intention to withdraw, initiate a two-year or longer process to settle the withdrawal. Hay said that during that period, agreements like the Korea EU FTA will continue as normal. The envoy also stressed that the UK will always be an outward-looking nation with a very strong trade and investment relationship with Korea. Now, in other news, 66 years ago today, North Korea launched the attack that started the Korean War. A ceremony was held in Seoul on Saturday to honor those from all over the world who fought to defend, uh, defend South Korea. Kim Hyun Bin reports. One of the deadliest chapters in Korean history opened on this day 66 years ago, as North Korea launched a surprise attack on South Korea. It marked the beginning of a three-year war that would claim hundreds of thousands of lives. To commemorate the anniversary and pay tribute to those who sacrificed their lives, the Ministry of Patriots and Veteran Affairs hosted a ceremony in Seoul on Saturday, with over 5,000 distinguished guests, including war veterans. Prime Minister Hwang kyo an used the somber occasion to condemn North Korea's continued provocations. North Korea continues to threaten our security with its latest nuclear and missile tests. We and the international community will counter Pyongyang's provocations and maintain peace on the peninsula. Nearly 2 million soldiers from 21 different countries defended South Korea under the UN flag. Some returned to Seoul for Saturday's ceremony and said they were pleasantly surprised to see how much the country they helped protect and build has changed over the past six decades. I can't believe the changes, really. 
It, it wasn't very much here. In John was completely destroyed. It's it's amazing how they rebuilt so fast. And uh, I'm glad to see that. Other Korean war veterans expressed sadness and remorse for their fallen comrades. I have never missed this ceremony. I think of my fallen comrades day and night, and always feel sorry that only I stayed alive. As South Korea commemorates the fateful events of June 25th, the lives of hundreds of thousands of fallen patriots will be remembered. The ceremony not only pays tribute to the Korean veterans, but also a solemn reminder that there must not be a rehab of the Korean War on the peninsula or anywhere around the world. Kim Hyun-bin, RDI News. Now, not everyone commemorated June 25th the same way. A hip-hop concert was held at Korea University in Seoul on Saturday. The organizers said they wanted to remind young people of the importance of remembering the sacrifices made by generations gone by. Ian Shin reports. Memorial Day brings back painful memories, scars and tears for many. But as the decades pass, the meaning of the day can be lost on some of Korea's young adults. So to honor the sacrifices and to further spread the true meaning of June 25th beyond mere historic details, a star-studded lineup took the stage at Korea University. Featuring uplifting musical performances, the event was about showing appreciation for the fallen and to honor those who are grieving while spreading hope that two Koreas can one day reunify. Inspired by the cause, performers say they want to use their talent and star status to raise awareness of the meaningful day. I feel so honored to be part of this event. I want everyone to really think about what this day means. I hope to spread a message of a brighter future for the two Koreas through my performance. Showing their appreciation for the fallen soldiers and wishes for peace on the Korean peninsula, the performance made sure to remind everyone what the concert is all about. I'm so glad I came. I'm a huge fan of hip-hop. But more than that, I'm happy to see my favorite artists coming together for such a wonderful cause. And among the crowd, family members, young and old, were also enjoying the upbeat atmosphere. This is a unique yet suitable way to honor such an important day in Korea, so I brought my family with me. It may not be the most traditional way of commemorating the anniversary, but today's concert helped deliver the message of peace and resolution through songs and beats, proving music's power to bring people together. Now, in the ongoing family feud at the top of Lotte Group, the head of Korea's fifth largest conglomerate, Shin Dong-bin, has once again won crucial backing from the Japanese shareholders of Lotte Holdings. In a vote Saturday by the de facto holding company, the shareholders threw their support behind the second son of the group's founder. The backing will help Shin Dong-bin strengthen his grip on power amid his struggle with elder brother Shin Dong-ju. Now, it's not the first time that the Japanese shareholders have voted for Shin Dong-bin as he prevailed in two previous meetings, including the last one back in March. Lotte Group is currently under a high-profile investigation in Korea over claims of embezzlement and slush funds. South Korea has become the sixth largest nuclear power producing country in the world. Korea, which currently has 25 operational reactors, has plans for another eight by the year 2022. The nation's nuclear security watchdog approved plans this week to build two nuclear power plants in the southern port city of Ulsan. That project will cost seven and a half billion US dollars. Officials say the reactors will boost Korea's electricity supply and benefit regional economic development. The U.S. is the top country in the world for nuclear power with 99 reactors followed by France, Japan, Russia and China. Officials from the Busan Coast Guard will spend the next couple of days in the Seychelles questioning the two Vietnamese men accused of murdering their Korean captain and chief engineer while aboard their fishing boat in the Indian Ocean. The officials are spending their Saturday attempting to get a clearer picture on the murders, interviewing witnesses, collecting evidence, conducting forensic tests and 
just really trying to figure out the motive. The Coast Guard was planning on bringing the suspects back to South Korea on Saturday, but unforeseen administrative issues mean they will have to wait until Monday. At least 23 people have been killed in catastrophic flooding in West Virginia, the worst the state has seen in a century. Hundreds of people were stranded and the waters were so powerful that they ripped homes away from their foundations and washed away cars. 250 millimetres of rain, that's one quarter of the average annual rainfall in that region, fell in just 24 hours. Tens of thousands of households remain without power and the state's governor... Uh, has declared a state of emergency, deploying 500 National Guard troops to help the recovery efforts. Finally, taking a look at the weather, uh, most of the country is under partly cloudy skies tonight. It will be a mild and dry night, with the low in Seoul only dipping to 16 degrees Celsius. Sunday is going to be rather hot and sunny, with afternoon highs around the nation in the high 20s, to low 30s and uh, we are in the middle of monsoon season here in Korea but no rain at all is in the forecast for the whole of next week. With that let's take a look at the weather around the world. Those are stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website arirang.com forward slash news. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.